The TT is still out due to the cooling problem that sprung up last week, but I've got a bucket of parts coming in and I'll have a video fixing the problem as soon as they arrive. Since I am yet again stuck without a car for a little bit, I figured now is as good of time as any to start my process of evaluating which second project car to get for the channel. I asked in a previous video if you guys were interested in watching my decision process, picking out and buying the next project car, and overwhelmingly you were all interested in it. Since I've got so many cars in my mind as potential projects, I want to narrow them down somehow. To do this, for this video, I'm specifically going to be focusing on underrated all-wheel drive cars that I don't see many people talking about or building. If this video does well and you guys enjoy it, let me know and I'll make a video on rear-wheel drive and front-wheel drive cars. For now, back to the main topic. When people think of all-wheel drive cars, they think of Evos and STIs. These are great cars, and I love them. They're both really expensive, and honestly, they're getting quite common to build. Everything on this list will be cheaper than both of these, and a lot more uncommon. You might even learn about a car you never knew existed. I also made sure that every car on this list can be found in a manual transmission. I have nothing against automatics, but manuals will always hold a special place in my heart. My dream for the next project car I build is for it to be an interactive experience. What I mean by this is I haven't made up my mind which car I'm looking for. I want your guys' input, so if you see a car from this list or any lists I make in the future that you want to see on the channel, let me know. A lot of the cars on this list are in an interesting position where they're at the bottom of their depreciation curves and people are starting to want more for them. Since they're gaining popularity, it takes a while for some people to catch on, so you can find some seriously good deals on cars that'll be worth more in the future. All that basically means for this video is that there's going to be a fluctuation in price for some of these cars. If you end up enjoying it, feel free to drop a like and subscribe. This list is in no particular order, and without further ado, here we go. The Volvo S60R or the V70R if you prefer wagons. This car comes with a 2.5 liter 5 cylinder engine making a stock 295 horsepower and 295 foot pounds of torque. This is mated to a 6 speed with great reviews and a Haldex based all wheel drive system. When this car came out, its goal was to beat the M3 and the S4. This car may not have achieved the same brand recognition, but boy does it have a cult like following. With an exhaust, these cars sound like V10s. <laughs> The price isn't that bad either. I generally see 130 to 160,000 mile cars go for around seven to eight and a half thousand dollars. One thing to note is that the wagon variant, the V70R, goes for a lot more money. The car does come in an automatic transmission, but you're gonna wanna stay away from it because it's over a second slower zero to 60. From my initial research evaluating this as a project car, it looks like you can make about 380 horsepower on the stock block with full bolt-ons and an upgraded turbo. Some forums claim that you can make around 400 horsepower, but this is probably a risky amount. These engines generally need the block shimmed due to weak cylinder walls, as well as the rods and pistons to make that much power. Obviously, if you go with forged internals, you can make a ton. I think these cars are starting to go up in value because people are realizing how cool of a project platform they really are. People have been tuning Volvo 5 cylinders for a really long time. In the States at least, this was the last fast Volvo wagon to come with a stick shift. The second car on the list is the Mazda Speed 6. I generally see these going anywhere from six to $16,000, depending on the condition. Some can be in pretty rough shape. This car came out between 2006 and 2008, and it came with Mazda's 2.3 liter engine. This is the same engine from the Mazda Speed 3, and it makes 274 horsepower and 280 foot-pounds of torque stock. This is made it exclusively to a six-speed transmission and a Haldex all-wheel drive system. If you're looking for a fun internet rabbit hole, this car is basically the precursor to the modern Focus R. It's a fun way to spend an afternoon. I think the best thing about this car is that there is a ton of modding support, and this engine makes a ton of power very easily. With just full bolt-ons and a tune, you'll be playing in the 350 to 360 wheel horsepower range. On top of this, this car has several E85 tuning options, bringing the torque past 400 foot-pounds. Since this is a popular engine, there's also plenty of options for forged internals and giant turbos, souping this car up to a whopping potential. The one thing you really need to look for if you're buying this car secondhand and from someone who's already modified it, is to make sure that this car has high pressure fuel pump internal. They run lean from the factory, so make sure that these are upgraded right away. The next car on the list, and probably one of the most infamous, is the B5 S4. Audi made this car between 1997 and 2002. This car has a ton of variability in price. These cars are starting to appreciate a lot because people are realizing how cool they are. On the one hand, it's pretty common to find these cars between four and $8,000 in pretty mediocre condition. Ones in really good condition will be far more expensive. A lot of people just don't realize how much this car is appreciating, so there's a good chance you'll find one that just 
is a lot cheaper than it should be. So long as the problems have all been sorted, it may be worth jumping on. In the States, the car comes stock with twin KO3 turbos mated to a 2.7 liter six cylinder engine. This engine responds to tuning incredibly well, but loves to brake. Like, it really loves it. Turbos, timing, and a plethora of vacuum leaks are just some of the common and very expensive repairs you'll need to worry about with this car. The car comes with a six-speed manual transmission, and unlike the previous entries on the list, real torsion all-wheel drive. Stock, this car only makes about 250 horsepower and 258 foot-pounds of torque, but a tune and basic bolt-ons brings this car up to 344 horsepower and nearly 400 foot-pounds of torque. Not to mention, slapping on KO4s or, god forbid, a single turbo setup is just going to make this car a rocket. Onto the downsides of this car. This may be one of Audi's most unreliable cars. It can cost quite a bit of money to keep this car running, but when it is running, it is a fantastic machine. The next car on the list is the 335i xDrive. This is by far and away the most common and most popular project car on this list. It also may be the most expensive car, but the performance more than justifies that. These can be found with high mileage around $8,000, but a low mileage N54 based 335i is going to be $15,000 or more. This car comes with an inline six cylinder twin turbo powered engine. The N55 and the 335i is mostly not considered just because they're really expensive. While natively this car is rear wheel drive, it can be found with a six speed manual and their X drive all wheel drive system. Full bolt ons and just the stock turbos can bring this car up to around 500 horsepower and torque. The N54, however, isn't the most reliable engine. High pressure fuel pump failure, turbocharger failure, wastegate rattle, leaky fuel injectors, and the list goes on. If you can find a well-maintained one for a good price, or you're just willing to work with the maintenance and the reliability issues, this is a phenomenal car. If built correctly, these cars can outperform the M3s of the same year, and they're often a lot cheaper. The next car on the list is one you probably haven't heard of the Saab Turbo X. This is a really obscure and really cool car that most people have no idea about. The car came out only in 2008 and it was a very limited run. It comes with Saab's 2.8 liter Turbo V6, a six speed manual transmission, and a stock 280 horsepower. Not to mention it's all wheel drive. Did I mention it also comes in a wagon? The odds of finding one of these locally are pretty slim. The rarity and performance alone may be worth the trip to go get one though. I think the Saab tuning community is criminally underrated. Their cars tune really well and are totally sleeper. Since this car's limited run, there's going to be limited tuning options, but a company called JZW has kits. They sell a stage 5 performance upgrading, including a tune, full exhaust, a 19T turbo upgrade, larger injectors, and netting 430 bhp and 532 foot-pounds of torque. This thing is a complete sleeper, and I absolutely love it. The next car on the list is also a limited run, this one by Subaru. I'm talking about the Legacy Spec B. This was a special limited run Legacy which came with the STI 6-speed transmission, the all-wheel drive system, and a stock 250 horsepower. Since they share the same engine, these cars have a similar modding potential to most STIs and WRXs, which means they can be tuned to the moon. This car came out between 2006 and 2009, but you were limited to 500 units per year in America. These generally sell around $14,000 and are a killer deal when you consider how expensive STIs STIs are getting. It's also much more of a sleeper. Subarus have a massive amount of aftermarket support and you won't have to worry about lack of parts for this car. You'll run into normal Subi problems, including head gasket and poor modifications from the previous owner. Subarus make good power when modded intelligently, but unfortunately most people don't do that. If you're looking to get a Subaru engine in a less common platform, the Baja Turbo and the Saab 92X Aero are two other things to consider. My main hesitation to getting an STI is the fact that I live in an area where it snows half the year. This means STIs are literally everywhere. The next three cars are oldies, but goodies. The next car on my list is the 3000 GT VR4, or the Dodge Stealth RTT if you bleed red, white, and blue. Other than cosmetics though, these are the same car. This car comes with a three liter V6 twin turbo with active aero, active exhaust, and active suspension. 320 stock horsepower, all-wheel drive, all-wheel steering, and a six-speed manual. And it was made in the 90s! With full bolt-ons and TDO4 style turbos, this car will make between 400 and 500 all-wheel horsepower. Everywhere online says these turbos are an easy swap as well. More requires a built motor. As you can probably guess, this car has problems. These are 30-year-old cars with modern car technology. Consequently, they're fragile. For that same reason, I consider this car a dream build. When people talk about twin-turbo six-cylinder JDM cars from the 90s, this one's left out. I don't think it should be. 
They can be found needing a bit of repair between six and seven thousand dollars, and good conditions can be found for around fifteen thousand. This is a car I see going up in value quite a bit in the future. This is an older car, and it's not the most reliable, so don't get this if you're looking for a new project daily. But if you're looking for an underrated contemporary of the GTR and the Supra, this is a great car. The next car is also a DSM, and it's another popular one. I'm talking about the Eclipse GSX, the Plymouth Laser, and the Talon TSI. This car used to be really popular for modification, and for some reason people don't really talk about it as much as of late. These cars are awesome. They have the power plant from the Lancer Evo, but come in a coupe variant with a less intelligent all-wheel drive system. Stock, they have about 210 horsepower and 214 foot-pounds of torque, but the aftermarket for these 4G63 engines is insane. The limit for the 4G63 is really the limit of your wallet. People have taken these engines past 1,000 horsepower, and depending how much time and money you have, you can do whatever you want with it. With full bolt-ons and a turbo from an Evo 9, these engines can handle around 400 horsepower on stock internal. That's quite a bit for a car this small. To add to the insanity that is this car, almost every commercial involves the eclipse falling from the sky as a comet. This car came in two different generations which look vastly different. If you like the tuner style of Fast and Furious, go with the second gen, but if for some Eurobeat synthwave styling, go with the first gen. These cars are made by DSM, which was a joint venture between Mitsubishi and Dodge. They are not known for their reliability whatsoever, but they are a hell of a lot of fun when they're working. The 4G63 is notoriously a finicky engine when it's misbehaving, so make sure you're either willing to work hard to understand and fix it, or have a 4G63 engine whisperer on call. The next car on the list may be one of the coolest cars you can actually buy. I'm talking about the Nissan Pulsar GTIR. This is a cool and underrated car that I rarely hear anyone mention. This car is another 90s car, but it is a doozy. The car comes with the famed SR20 DET from the JDM 240SX in a tiny all-wheel drive hatchback mated to a manual transmission. Stock, the car makes 277 horsepower and 210 foot-pounds, but the car literally only weighs 2,400 pounds, so it's a rocket. This is a really limited run car, but there's actually one for sale near me, and it looks wild. The SR20 has a plethora of support from the modding perspective too, which makes this car a true gem. The car is basically a homologation group A rally car. The actual race car version of this car competed with the Audi Quattro in rally which says something about this car's performance. If you're driving one of these, the likelihood of you running into a person with the same car is exceptionally low. Plus, the thing looks rad. The last two cars on the list are ones that I am genuinely considering, but they're gonna require a little bit more work to be a project car, specifically because they are both naturally aspirated. It's on my bucket list to learn to turbo or supercharge a car, so these may be great options if you guys like that idea. The first car on the list is the Acura TL SH all-wheel drive. When people think of Acuras, they generally think of front-wheel drive cars. Hell, my first car was an RSX, and that was front-wheel drive. In fact, this car is all-wheel drive has a six-cylinder, 305 horsepower, 3.7 liter VTEC engine with a six-speed manual. That's wild for a Honda-based car. These cars are really obscure, and in my opinion, they sell for a lot less than I think they're really worth. You really don't see many people driving them, let alone building them as project cars. The last few in my area I've seen sell were sold for around $14,000, but if they're in good condition, they'll go for more. The final car on this list is the Audi B6 S4. The 4.2 V8 is one of Audi's more controversial engines. This car literally has the V8 from the V8 version of the Audi R8. That's a lot of the number eight. In the world of S4s, people look down on this one because it is naturally aspirated. There's a lot of over-exaggeration of the unreliability of the engine from what I've found. They sound great, come with a stock 340 horsepower and 300 foot-pounds of torque, and so long as the timing chain has been dealt with, there really aren't any super major time bombs you need to worry about. I've unironically been looking at these a lot lately. There's one for sale in town that I think would be a really fun project. If I were to get it, my ultimate goal would be to design and fabricate a custom turbo kit for it. I think all of these cars would be fantastic projects, but I really want to hear what you guys would think. Let me know which ones you would really like to see on the channel. If there's a specific one, call it out in the comments. I'll most likely end up going with the car from the list that you guys like for the next project car, and you'll be able to see me build it on the channel. That being said, I'm into cars for the long run, not for the short term. So there's a high likelihood that you'll see many of these cars on the list on this channel at some point in the next few years. If any of that sounds interesting, or if you like the video, consider liking and subscribing. I hope you found my rambling interesting and learn something. Thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful day.